Good morning, students. Welcome to the part 14 of the chapter Coordinate Geometry. In the previous class, we have discussed Heron's formula to calculate the area of a triangle on a coordinate plane when its three vertices are given. In this class, we will discuss one more formula which is a generalized formula to calculate the area of a triangle when its three vertices are given. Before going to that, you tell me what is the name of this shape? It's a type of a quadrilateral. Uh, very good. It's actually a trapezium. Now, the region which is shaded now in yellow is actually the area of the trapezium. As we already know, the when you have drawn a closed figure, this region which is bounded by that closed figure is called its area. Now, here in a trapezium, two sides will be parallel. One pair of opposite sides are parallel to each other. In this case, AB and DC are parallel sides here. And now, when I draw the perpendicular from the side AB to the side DC, we say that this is the distance between the two parallel sides. Here, it is actually PQ. Now, using these values, we can find the area of the trapezium ABCD. So, this is the formula to calculate the area of a trapezium, which is half of sum of the two parallel sides and this should be multiplied by the distance between the two parallel sides. In this case, what are the two parallel sides? AB and DC. Now, what is the distance between them? It's actually PQ. So, the area of this trapezium becomes 1 by 2 of AB plus DC multiplied by PQ. Let us take one more case. Here I have taken another trapezium. Here, the two parallel sides I have taken the small letters to indicate them. A and B are the two parallel sides. And the distance between A and B is taken as H now. If we apply the same formula to calculate the area of the trapezium, here actually we have area is, yes, exactly, half A plus B into H. Now, in most of the cases, yeah, we actually write this formula as 1 by 2 H of A plus B where H is the distance between the two parallel sides and A, B are the two parallel sides lengths. So, whenever you have to calculate the area of a trapezium, this is what we have to do. Now, I think you are wondering why we are discussing area of a trapezium when the concept here we are under discussion is area of a triangle. I will tell you. Suppose this is the triangle for which we have to calculate the area. Now let the coordinates of these three vertices be x1, y1, x2, y2 and x3, y3. Now as we know, these are the coordinates. This is x1, y1, x2, y2 and for c it will be x3 and y3. Now in order to calculate the area of this triangle, we will follow a procedure in which we draw perpendicular lines to the x-axis from both from the three points A, B, and C. So A, P is one perpendicular onto the x-axis. C, Q is another perpendicular, and B, R is the other perpendicular. So here we have drawn three perpendicular lines from the vertices A, B, and C. The three perpendiculars to the x-axis are A, P, C, Q, and B, R. Now the thing is, if you look at this, what is an what is the shape actually? Yeah, it's actually a trapezium. So here A, P, Q, C is a trapezium. Now look at this. This is another trapezium. This is actually C, Q, R, and B. Now here we have drawn one more trapezium, which is A, P, R, and B. Now if you look at this. This is the original triangle for which we have to calculate the area. I go back to this once again. So, this is the triangle for which we have to calculate the area ABC. To calculate this area, I am drawing three trapeziums. Observe this carefully. I have drawn one trapezium APQC and the other trapezium CQRB. Now, these two trapeziums actually have covered the triangle and it actually has one more extra area which is now in blue color. So, in order to calculate the area which is in red color, what we have to do is, we have to calculate 
area of the trapezium APQC and we have to calculate the area of the trapezium CQRB. We have to add these two big trapeziums and then from that whole value we have to subtract this blue trapezium which is A, P, R and B. So this is the procedure we are going to follow. Observe this carefully. First we will calculate area of the trapezium A, P, Q, C. Then we will calculate the area of the trapezium C, Q, R, B. From these sum we will subtract area of this trapezium A, P, R, B. That is what we are going to do now. Now we will take one trapezium at a time and we will find area of each trapezium. Now I have taken the first one trapezium A, P, Q and C. Now what are the two parallel sides here? If you observe closely A, P and C, Q are the two parallel sides of this trapezium. Now what is the distance between them? The distance is actually P to Q. So now we have to find the area of this trapezium. This will be 1 by 2 H of A plus B as we already discussed 1 by 2 H is actually distance between the two sides this is PQ. So here we have taken PQ and the two parallel sides are AP and CQ. Now let us take the values. So PQ is actually distance from X1 to X3. Now these as we know these two are actually points on the X axis. So if you want to know the distance between these two you have to take the difference of the X coordinate. So this will be X3 minus x1. Right hand side value is x3 and you subtract x1 from this so this will be x3 minus x1. Now when you come to the case of AP it's actually y1 because from here origin to this it will be y1. Similarly CQ is actually y3 because the coordinates of C are x3 and y3. Now here we have AP as y1 and CQ as y3. Let us substitute the values here. We got 1 by 2. If you observe here, I have taken absolute value. In regular geometry, values will be always positive. But when you take the case of coordinate geometry, sometimes the coordinates are negative. So you may get this area also negative. To eliminate the error of taking negative value, we already discussed in the previous cases where we calculate the distance between the two points. We will take this absolute value so that you will always get a positive value. Now here PQ is X3 minus X1 multiplied by AP this is Y1 plus Y3. Now let us multiply these two. This is a binomial and this is another binomial. Let us multiply these two. X3 into Y1 plus X3 Y3. So we got two terms and again minus X1 Y1 minus X1 Y3. So you will have four values all together. X3 Y1 X3 y3 then minus x1 y1 minus x1 y3 so this is the formula for e. this is actually the area of the previous trapezium now let us take the case of this trapezium so this is this now let us move to the next one c q r b what are the two parallel sides here c q b r you have to observe this very carefully now this is the distance between these two QR X2 minus X3. So let us take the formula once. This is one half QR because this is the distance between these two and CQ and BR are the two parallel sides. So this is the formula we have. Now let us substitute the values. QR how much is QR? X2 minus X3. Then how much is CQ? It's actually Y3 because this is y coordinate is y3 so this is y3 now how much is br it's actually y2 let us substitute the values here now again you have the product of a binomial with another binomial let us multiply x2 y2 plus x2 y3 now here we have x3 minus x3 y2 minus x3 y3 so these are the four values we have x2 y2 plus x2 y3 minus x3 y2 minus x3 y3. So this is the area of the second trapezium. Now let us take the trapezium which is to be subtracted. Now what are the two parallel sides here? AP and BR are the parallel sides and the distance between them is actually P 
R. Can you tell me how much is P R from this diagram? X two minus X one. So let us take the formula. Area of trapezium A P R B is one by two. Distance is P R. So I have taken P R multiplied by two parallel sides A P and B R. Let us write the values here. P R is X two minus X one. And again, A P is Y one. And B R is actually y2. Now let us substitute the values here. This is what we got. Now if you multiply, what will we have? X2 y1 plus x2 y2 minus x1 y1 minus x1 y2. So we have calculated the areas of the three three trapeziums. Now let us substitute these values in the original formula which we have taken previously. So you have to add the area of trapezium APQC. To that of QRBC, and then you have to subtract the blue color trapezium. Let us substitute the values here. This is the value of the first trapezium area. This is the area of the second trapezium, and this is the area of the third one. Now, actually, we can take out half from all the three because half is common in all of them. Then we have taken absolute value. I have put everything in single absolute value, single modulus. Now, if you observe this, actually we have twelve values. From the first one, we have four terms. From the second area, we have four more terms. In the third case, actually this is minus. So you have to multiply each and every term in the third value with the negative. In other words, we have to change the sign of these four values. So x two y one becomes minus x two y one, plus x two y two becomes minus x two y two, minus x one y one becomes plus x one y one. And minus x1 y2 becomes plus x1 y2. So there are 12 terms here. If you observe carefully, there are three pair of terms which get cancelled here because one is positive and the other is negative. If you observe this, this is x3 y3 and this is minus x3 y3. They will be zero. Then this is minus x1 y1 and this is plus x1 y1. They they two will be cancelled and you will have zero. And there are two more terms which will be cancelled, plus x2 y2 and minus x2 y2. So here we have cancelled six terms out of the twelve terms. Six terms are added to get zero, plus x3 y3 and minus x3 y3, plus minus x1 y1, plus x1 y1, plus x2 y2 and minus x2 y2. If you observe, there are the terms with the same number here. This is x3 y3. They are cancelled. X1, Y1 got cancelled, and X2, Y2 are also got cancelled. Now let us write the remaining terms here. We got X3, Y1 minus X1, Y3 plus X2, Y3 minus X3, Y2 minus X2, Y1 plus X1, Y2. These are the values we have here. Now actually we rearrange these terms so that the terms with X1 comes first, and the terms with X2 come next. And the terms with x3 come later. So what we do is I'll interchange these two places. X1, Y2 will come here, and X3, Y1 will go there. And similarly, X3, Y2 will come here, and X2, Y1 will come here. So that we can rearrange them in a particular order. So then we have X1, Y2 minus X1, Y3. This X2, Y2 will be in the same place. Now this X2, Y1 comes here, and X3, Y2 will go to the end. We did this because We can take out x1 from these two. X1 is common in these two, right? And similarly, here x2 is common in these two terms, and x3 is common in these two terms. So here we have got six terms in total. Out of these six terms, two terms have x1 as common, two terms have x2 common, and two terms have x3 common. Then you will have if you take out x1 here, you will have y2 minus y3. If you take out x2 here, you will have y3 minus y1. If you take out x3 here, you will have y1 minus y2. So that's all you have here. So I have taken out x1, I got y2 minus y3. Plus I have taken out x2, I got y3 minus y1. Plus I have taken out x3 and I got y1 minus y2. So this is the formula to calculate the area of a triangle when it's Three vertices are given. So to calculate the area of any triangle with the vertices given, this is how you have to do. 
right? So when you have a triangle ABC whose vertices are x1, y1, x2, y2 and x3, y3, what you have to do is you have to make use of this formula to calculate the area of the triangle. Actually, we say that this expression is a cyclic expression. Here you have x1, x2, x3. So x1 is followed by x2 and x2 is followed by x3. They are in an order. Then look into these brackets here. Here you have y2 minus y3. Then we have y3 minus y1. And then we have y1 minus y2. Actually, first when you got x1, here we have difference of two y coordinates. But these two y coordinates come after 1. y2 and y3. If you take here, this is 2. So what is the next number of 2? So you will have y3 here. After 3 you will have 1 again. 3 and 1. Now here this is x3. After 3 you will have 1. And after 1 you will have 2. So these are actually cyclic terms. x1 of y2 minus y3. Plus x2 of y3 minus y1. Plus x3 of y1 minus y2. So this is how you calculate the area of a triangle when its three vertices are given. 1 by 2 modulus of x1 of y2 minus y3 plus x2 of y3 minus y1 plus x3 of y1 minus y2. So this is how you can, can, you can calculate the area of a triangle when the three vertices of the triangle are given. So follow this. You have to practice.